We're going to have evidence of the power of the tongues. We're going to have evidence. We're going to be born again. And when we get baptized in Jesus' name and filled with his spirit, then we can get to get the Holy Ghost. If our self, if our self, our bodies are not completely free of the sin, when we're free, then that's when he's going to go with the next step. See, it's a lot of people today that's reading, but they're not born again. They think that they are born again, but they're not. Well, if we would only, we, we would only follow what he's saying, how he's saying it. Follow me as I follow Christ. Right now, uh, Paul. Well, I want to. I want to jump in, in a, if you don't mind. I want to jump in a, li a little bit because this is also, it's not only a personal question, but it's a classical question. It's a question that yes. that uh, is was, word for word, a question. It was asked before. It was asked before. All right. You want to tell us about it? Heart. It means they were pricked in their heart when, when Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost, and they was printing their horn, because they knew that they were the one that killed Jesus. Uh, of course, we know that he rose, and I, we, know, we know that, but they were printing their horn, and the question was posed even then, of what must I do to be saved? That's why Peter is saying right here in Acts 2.38, he's, he's getting ready to let them know, uh, again, what you must do. Well, I mean, what they must do. Well, um, if we could, and I haven't typed it in, you are uh, for uh, our uh, Bible school, Bible, uh, Bible study um, participants uh, for today that's watching. But uh, if we go to Acts 16, uh, and 30. I think that's probably, maybe, where, what you looking for? Um, where the question came, sir, what must I do to be saved? So he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. Okay, now what was before that and before that? Let's see. Are we talking about um, Acts, the 16th chapter? And he was talking to the guard. Uh, uh -huh. They wanted to commit suicide because he knew there was... Uh, that's Peter, huh? I mean, Paul. Yeah, that's, okay, that's... Uh, 28 says, but Paul shouted, you both are correct, uh, that, that it was a jailer. The um mm -hmm. uh I'm gonna go all the way up to 25 because this is around midnight. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and they're in jail. Then um and other prisoners were listening. 26. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake. And I'm reading for the from the New Living Translation. And the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. And this to me is kind of symbolic. Uh -huh. 27, the jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped. So he drew his sword to kill himself. Now, let me say now, uh, the Romans were so cruel that uh, if they had gotten their hands on him and all the prisoners was gone, he would have been tortured unmercifully. But Paul, that's why he pulled his sword to kill himself because he would have he figured he might as well go quick. And, and you know, a sword ain't that quick, but, you know, it was going to be much better than if they got a hold to him. 
28, uh -huh. but Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself. We are all here. 29, the jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Wait a minute, excuse me, I, I blinked and lost my, before Paul and Silas. And 30, then he brought them out and asked, sir, what must I do to be saved? 31, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. 32, and they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Uh -huh. So now. Please, please read 33. That's, please, that's, please, please, that's right. Oh, I'm sorry. Please. <laughs> Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and wash uh -huh. their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. What? All baptized, right. Minister God. That's baptized. right, baptized. That's one of the things that happens so often yes. um, with the pastor in the church reading or whoever is reading. They would uh, read on down and the most important scripture that would kind of explain things, um, they would stop at it. They would stop yeah. before they get there. Sorry, uh, I made that same <laughs> error because you get so excited because you didn't get. Don't be sorry, because you know I apologize. I'm just an earth person, you know, and I studied this thing for years. God, God put it there, you know. And when a person understands and gets the revelation of the baptism, that it's it's not titles, you know, but it's name. Father's a name. I mean, Father's a title. It was Father's Day, so everybody that was a father, you know, it was that day. The sons, we got, we got sons all over. But to get specifically into what Jesus is saying, we need a name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. You know, we, we okay, in, in, in the book of Acts right here, we're going to see it all everywhere. Cornelius in, in Acts chapter 10 were baptized in the name of Jesus. A devout man. Not it. Now this salvation here, what, what, what Paul just got through saying about salvation is true. He asked, what must I do? That's the question of the night. Yeah. What must uh -huh. I do to be saved? So Paul clearly answers it right here. And he says, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Believing on the Lord and, and thou shalt be saved in thy household. Mm -hmm. So we have to first believe. That's what it's you want oh, to be saved. Believe that Jesus, that he was born, that he lived, that he died, and that he rose again, and that he's coming back again mm -hmm. for his people. Mm -hmm. You have to believe on that. Yes. And then you have to receive that power. We can't walk this walk, this Christian walk, without any help. And Jesus yes, left sir. the power he's with us here sir. that when we, when we be saved, and we believe we receive that Holy Ghost power. With that power, that's going to give us the strength to walk this walk. Yes, so yes, sir. learn how to pray. We go to Psalms. The book of Psalms is full of prayers. Go to Psalms and learn how to pray. If you want to learn how to walk, just walk. Go to Proverbs. Proverbs give you all the wisdom to walk this Christian journey. Uh -huh. So in order to be saved, you have to believe, be baptized. And walk the walk. Because we have the Bible. Once we become saved, we become the Bible that other people are looking at. These people in the temple, when Peter and them were out there preaching, they looked upon these men and seen yes, what sir. they were doing. They can, they not only were the words coming out of their mouth lining up with their lifestyle, you know, they were walking this walk. Yes, sir. That's what we need to do. After being saved, we have to walk the walk. 
link up with somebody, get you a partner, get somebody to, you know, to sharpen you up. You know, even as we go exactly. further in the book of Acts, we're going to see that they go out together two by two. They don't go out by themselves. We need help. The Ecclesiastes even tells us that two are better than one. Mm -hmm. you know, so if one fall, the other can help them up. So we Amen. need, right now, I have Minister Gosh, Sister Anthony here helping me. You know, we all need help on this journey. So find somebody to help, help you when you uh when you accept salvation. Amen. I want to, um... you know, uh, Elder, let me just talk about the jailer. You know, even the jailer, he had a uh, what, what brought his heart to the place where he wanted to be baptized? He wanted what? Those were Paul and Silas. He may have been one of the ones that beat, beat him in, in whatever, you know, but he, but the, his heart was so taken to them, you know, then he seen his miraculous miracle, you know, so then he wanted to know what must he do to be like that? And Paul told him, you know. It's a, it's a glorious thing when you feel with his spirit and you walk in the newness of life and you meeting born again, believe you're meeting a new family and you're not doing the things that you used to do, you know, and you can repent as you know, and it's very important as Elder said to get that one as your partner and say, Girl, look, you don't need that. You don't need that, baby. You don't need that. You know? And they and, and, you know, and we all need that. Amen. And the, that um, is um, bad habits that you had before that, because they sometimes uh, come back to haunt you, so to speak. <laughs> That's the that that uh, uh, evangelist Alicia Garth is referring to. Now, uh, right quick, I just want to say one thing is that you may run into people out there that say, oh, uh, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual, or um, that you can be saved uh, and uh, believe any number of things, but um, th that's not true. And uh, Acts, the fourth chapter, uh, in the 12th verse, which we did a couple of weeks ago, uh, it said, uh, the name of Jesus is very important. It's essential. In fact, uh, the life of Jesus, you're knowing it is essential. That's why we study the Bible. Now, uh, because we need to find out what's important. And verse 12 says, there is salvation in no one else. You know, so Jesus is the answer. God, and uh, the verse goes on to say, God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. And so remember, uh, you know, that the believing is not believing willy nilly. You know, is believing <laughs> in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. All right, uh, Elder, you want you have any more? And let me let me just say this uh, to our listeners. You notice that I don't I don't have a title. Uh, I just I, I'm just a, um, a regular Christian, and so. That try, you know, I try to, I try to, you know, uh, study the Bible a bit. And uh, so when I say something, it may not be so deep. You know, I'm not, uh, it, it, and I might leave something out. But thank God that uh, we have Evangelist Garth and Elder. <laughs> Uh, Anthony Lewis, and they uh, have uh, a deeper, broader, wider, uh, prayerful uh, understanding. And I'm so glad that they uh, let them see. But let me just say, I think she did just as good as those other two. Sales be used by God to be of service to you. Now, 
We look and uh, we thank you, um, questioners, so much for that because it's not okay. just a question for yourself. Uh, That's right. It is for the world. We got a lost world. They are yeah. in need of answers. They're in need of salvation. And that's why folks so mad and, and uh, you know, in a, such a destructive mindset because they don't know where, they don't know where to turn or what to do. That's right. So um, for you to seek and ask is wonderful. Now I know that the agenda agenda was we were gonna start at six thirty, stop at seven thirty, go uh, do uh, finish up Acts five, uh, read Acts six, discuss a, as much as of it as we could. But God makes the agenda here. That's amen. That's beautiful there. And uh, we wanna. Pause now. You've asked the question, what must I do to be saved? We're going to pause now and we're going to tag team prayer for everyone who has that question in their hearts. And I'm going to ask uh, Elder, if you will start, we got uh, evangelists in the center and then I have uh, the wheel, uh, the rear, if the Holy Spirit says so. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we come. Okay, so I think those guys uh, did an excellent job of uh, sharing their views. And uh, boy, oh boy, it's like almost 40 minutes of uh, explaining this and uh, giving their thoughts on it. And obviously they were hungry for it. They they had a lot to say about it, and I appreciate that very much. And that's pretty interesting to see how uh, some people respond. And those three people, they weren't short on words, were they? That was good stuff. 